Hi there fellow guitarists, my name is Josh Rogers and welcome to the MBN Guitar Channel. I've got a pretty cool thing today, uh, I'll be giving away a copy of this. Which is the Classical Guitar Collection. And this has been sent to me by the wonderful people over at Faber Music Publishing. Faber Music has agreed to send me two copies of two books. This is the first book and I'll be reviewing another one in a later video. The great thing about this is that second book I can give away so there's a copy for me and a copy for one lucky person out there if you want a chance to win this book you have to answer three questions and you can find those questions in the description below in this video you can also find it in my blog and my blog actually has a much better review than what I could probably do in a video a video review for a book is kind of strange you know so I think it's best to have one written down What is the name of the famous guitarist that transcribed the majority of pieces in this book? Once again, we're talking about this book here. Question number two. Which Australian composer has a piece in this book and called the famous guitarist John Williams, I'm sure you all know who John Williams is, the king of the guitar? And the final question. What is the name of the company that published this book? So once again, you have to answer all three of those questions. You can leave your answers in one of three places, or you can leave it in a couple of different places, it doesn't matter. You can write your answers in a comment below in this video. You can also comment directly on the blog, or you can head to Facebook, and you can just click on the link that I have in my channel icon, and you can leave your answers there in the post that is specifically dedicated to this particular review slash competition. The book is written using standard notation, so unfortunately if you can't read music, maybe this book is not going to be very good for you until you do learn to read music because there are no tabs. And actually I did write in my blog, but that's probably one of the downsides to the book actually. The book itself is great, don't get me wrong. There's a wonderful collection of pieces in here, some of which I've never seen before. And I'm actually looking forward to learning those and including them in my repertoire. For those of you that can only read tabs, sadly this book is probably out of bounds for you or it's not going to give you much use. Don't let that put you off though, I mean it's still a great prize and if you know somebody that you can give it to or you decide to embark on a learning journey and learn how to read music then of course it's going to be a great book for you to have. The majority of the transcriptions in here are by my favourite classical guitarist Julian Bream. Uh, most people are in like two camps, They're, they like Julian Bream or they like John Williams or if you're like me you like both. But he has done most of the transcriptions in here and that in itself for me is uh, worth trying to win this book for or just buy the book. Julian Bream creates some of the the best transcriptions that are out there. In my mind, they're a little bit harder than most because you know he's an amazing guitar player, so uh, I think he writes them according to his own style. Great selection. If we just have a look through, uh, we've got transcriptions by Albanath, Bach, Purcell, Mozart. Uh, a couple that stood out for me was transcriptions of Debussy, his works, and also Nicholas Moore and Peter Scholthorpe. Peter Scholthorpe is a, well was, he's passed away now, an Australian composer of note. I think his most famous work was Kakadu, and uh, he also featured kind of prominently actually in a documentary of John Williams, the guitarist, not the composer, of John Williams, the guitarist, possibly because he wrote some music for John Williams, and also he's an Australian, as most of you probably know. John Williams, the guitarist, is also an Australian. And Peter Scholthorpe has one piece represented in this book. And uh, he's also most noted for saying in that documentary, which is called The Seville Concert, uh, he, he said that John Williams wasn't the prince of the guitar, he's actually the king. Yeah, I really love that saying. Most of you might be familiar with the fact that it was Segovia that first coined that praise. The, the praise that he heaped upon John Williams was that John Williams was the prince of the guitar. Something like... God has laid a finger on his brow. There's an awesome selection of pieces in here. I don't really have many bad things to say about the book. Uh, I would say there's a couple of little editing discrepancies where sometimes they say tuning for the guitar or tune the guitar like such. 
it's nothing really major. As an editor, you should probably make sure that all your formulas or your templates or you know, the format, the way that you present something is consistent. That's especially important for students of the guitar because uh, you don't want to have too many things mixed within a book. Uh, it's important that things are kept simple because you have enough to concentrate on with the music, let alone adjusting to differences in editing. One of the other things that uh, I thought maybe could have been a wee bit better was a little bit more attention to the right hand fingering. Some of the pieces, particularly the Julian Bream pieces, have some quite detailed right hand fingering and so do this to some of the pieces that he didn't transcribe uh, but others don't have any at all. I guess it's not such a bad thing because this is aimed at intermediate to advanced players but if you are in the intermediate stages then it could be really quite helpful to have those fingerings there and I think that if you put them in one piece you should put them in all. That's just a mini gripe, it's, it's not really important but it is helpful. There are a couple of extremely well known pieces in here, a Capriccio Arab, La Catedral, Asturias. Uh, there was one little problem with La Catedral. The first section, the Preludio Suadad, was actually notated incorrectly. I'm not going to go on um, too much about it within this video. It's better if you just go over to my blog and I've taken a couple of pictures of how it is in the book and how it actually should be. For those of you that are students in guitar or looking to get into your own thing of transcribing, Sometimes you have to make sure that you know how to assign different voices. The guitar is capable of up to about four voices, could be a bit more, but usually it's around three. A lot of Bach stuff is two, uh, but it does vary, but usually it's between about two and three voices. And uh, unfortunately, I don't know why, but in the preludio for La Catedral by Barrios Mangore, the editor used three voices and it, it's just extremely difficult to read written for three voices, it's usually written using two voices and that just makes for a much smoother and less stressful reading experience and that's pretty important actually. Uh, the book itself is really well presented and one big advantage of a book that's over PDF or computer files is that when you put a book in front of you there's no distractions or there shouldn't be. If you have a PDF on a computer screen and you've got Facebook open over there, you've got YouTube open over here and some other tabs. It's quite easy to get sidetracked. How do I know this? Because I do it myself. <clears throat> so it's good to have a book. Sometimes you just put your book on your music stand, and you open that book and you're just in the zone. You, know, you turn off your phone, turn off the computer and just get into the zone. It's also really easy to make any notes if you need to, whereas you know with a PDF or something, sometimes it's a little bit more difficult to do that. Even I find that I don't really like making notes on a PDF. I prefer to write notes physically on a book. I could be old school, but that is definitely one of the advantages to using a book. Also, it's really, really beautifully presented. Uh, the book itself is so nice. It just feels great, and that's good to have as well. It, it, it can become like part of your library, and uh, there's nothing wrong with old school books. If I could have wished for a couple of things to go with this book, it might have been a little bit more of online resources, online help. A lot of you out there know that I make a lot of transcriptions myself and I usually try to provide some online form to help you learn it. As most of you know, I make video tutorials to help, uh, but also uh, for those of you that don't know, there's a lot of guitar software. I use Guitar Pro 6 and 7 and actually it's so easy to make a, a WAV file or a MIDI file or an MP3 using those. and you can put that up online. It doesn't sound like a real guitar, it sounds kind of close and there's a little bit of extra work involved to do it, but I think that could be a really helpful, uh, beneficial resource to go along with this because I know a lot of you out there, you wouldn't know these pieces, your music reading skills might not be quite up to par and it's, you get nervous, you think, Gee, have I, am I even playing this right, am I playing this correctly? And to have, have an online resource that you could go to, maybe not see someone play it, but at least hear it and then you'd know, oh well, I've got it wrong there, or yeah, yeah, I got it right. That would be really nice to have, the online community. There is a Facebook page for Faber Music, but I do suggest you just go along there and click on that and get yourself involved with a community that they have online. That's also extremely important. It's a bit like YouTube. You can create a community and have like feedback with the people that are producing these kinds of things, or putting tutorials out there. The music itself is really easy to read. It has been written 
excellently, I would say. It's, everything is so clear. No mistakes that I could find at all. That's what you want. You don't want to be, like, you know, squinting to try to read things. And everything's good. It's nice and bold. A wonderful selection of pieces, too. If I, I'm just going to get into that. There's 48 songs or pieces, I should say, within the book. And they cover a huge range from the Renaissance period right through to the most modern pieces by Nicholas Moore, Sculthorpe, uh, Segredas. And of course we've got pieces by the greats. You got, you've got Carulli, Saw, Giuliani, Tarega. They're all represented in here. And it, it's my firm belief that if you, if you really persevere and you got through this book, you would have an amazing repertoire. And no one would, would be able to criticize it. You would have a repertoire that spans 400 years. And a lot of serious classical guitarists, that's what they aim for. They aim to have a repertoire that not only is impressive to listen to, like full of complicated pieces and so on and so forth, but also a repertoire that does cover the Renaissance period, the Baroque period, the Romantic period, the modern period, and within all those periods, the different styles of music Bach, lute suites, sonatas, concertos, waltzes, South American music, Japanese music, American music, English music, German, French, just music from all over the world, if Russian music, how could we forget Nikita Koshkin? That's what we aim for, and a book like this can really help you to build your repertoire. This isn't by any means an exhaustive book on that, it can't be, no single book can ever contain all the pieces. But nevertheless, this would be a great addition to your collection. I don't have much else to say about it. Uh, I won't be really playing any pieces from it in this. I may do so in a couple of later videos, uh, which is why you should subscribe, actually, so you don't miss out. But as I said, make sure, if you want to win a copy, go into the description and click on the link to take you to the blog post that I've written. You will easily find all the answers here, otherwise you're just going to have to rewind through this video and check. Get yourself involved, don't miss out on this. You can win yourself a, a really cool book and maybe it will help you to get to the next level of your playing. I would recommend that you go to the blog, read the blog, because it could be much easier for you to understand the questions. And not only that, but also find the answers, uh, because sometimes I know a lot of you, English is not your first language, but it could be easier for you to actually read English and you can take your time. So I do suggest head on over to the blog. The link to the blog is in the description and you'll find all the answers that you need to answer these questions correctly. But I have spoken enough, hit the like button, subscribe, make sure you answer these questions and get yourself in with a chance to win these books. Once again, big shout out to the people at Faber Music and let your fingers fly.